uh, we instrumented these up to collect runoff, and we had, and this was a two-year study, in two years we had 77 natural runoff, uh, runoff events. This was all, this was not uh, simulated runoff events. And we measured a whole bunch of different parameters in that. Um, and so this is what we found uh, for just volume of runoff over this uh, given two-year period. And on average, we could see on average with a high-maintenance lawn, there was about 1.6 millimeters of runoff, 4 millimeters in the low-maintenance lawns. And, and the forested, and I wouldn't call it forested, wooded areas had about, again, about 4 millimeters of runoff. And it depended on, again, where in this particular watershed, because we had three three different areas in this watershed, a low potential for runoff, a medium and high potential, and you can see there is a difference. However, in each of these situations, the high maintenance lawn had the least amount of runoff. Uh, you have a denser turf, you have more active root system, you probably have more macropore flow due to earthworm activity, and as we moved away from that, uh, we saw substantially greater amounts of, of runoff, and that will relate to water quality issues in a second. And so the one difference we did see between us and, and, and in Minnesota is when this runoff occurred. Now we ran this, happened to run this during two years where there was sub substantial summer, uh, late spring and, and summer uh, precipitation events. We had several 70 plus year uh, return frequency storms during this event. So under wet conditions, you can see in our situation, our, our amount of runoff that occurred during the winter time, no matter what the, the landscape use was, was was relatively uh, small compared to spring and summer losses. If we went in a little dry year, this distribution probably would change. We happen to have two wet years, and uh, and and but this is how it did uh, break out over that. So if I were in, into in the stormwater management and I were looking for a landscape uh, feature to try to reduce stormwater management, I think I might consider a high maintenance lawn as as one option uh, compared to either a, a wooded, not a forest, but wooded area or a low maintenance turf area that was just mowed. Now, if we look at, at the water quality differences, um, I want to point several things out. Now, we did measure uh, total phosphorus, particular phosphorus, and dissolved phosphorus concentrations, and blocked by runoff potential. So block number three in each of these events was the, was the, the part of the, the watershed where there was really low runoff potential. And as you can see, under low runoff potential, there was either no difference in dissolved phosphorus or landscape type, uh, a slight difference in particular phosphorus, and if we look at the, this is the high maintenance turf area, has very little erosion potential, so there wasn't much particulate loss. And then if we get down to total phosphorus, again, a little, a little less with the high maintenance lawn compared to, to the other two landscape types, but not a lot of loss. So as we kind of go down to block two, a greater potential for runoff, and block three, our greatest potential, this had a very shallow water table, bedrock, probably only about 12 inches of soil before we hit these impervious layers. These soils were wet quite often, and during wet years, you might expect a lot of runoff. So if we kind of look at these uh, three, uh, again, depending on what version of phosphorus you want to look at, if we look at, at total phosphorus levels, we could see on landscape type, especially under high maintenance conditions, really didn't have an impact. There was a fair amount of loss with all those, but it wasn't, uh, the landscape type had little, had, had little impact. Under kind of intermediate potential for runoff, the high maintenance turf area had less uh, total phosphorus runoff than other, the other two land use types, and those were, were quite similar. Now, if we go up, if we look at particular phosphorus, we can see, as you might expect, if you have a high maintenance turf and very little potential for particulate loss or, or erosion characteristics, we had substantially and significantly less amounts than the other two land uses uh, in either very high uh, runoff areas or the moderate ones. Now, if we look at dissolved phosphorus, you might expect areas that are being fertilized with phosphor phosphorus forms that are more soluble, that there is a potential for those high maintenance turf areas to, to see more dissolved phosphorus losses. Under low uh, runoff conditions, there were no difference between landscape types. Uh, there was a slight difference, uh, a slight less amount of of dissolved phosphorus with a high maintenance turf than the other two landscape types. But this was the only time we saw any uh, indication by putting that what we would consider a very high rate of phosphorus being put on, uh, showing up uh, affecting, potentially affecting water quality. In this case, having a significantly higher amount of dissolved phosphorus load uh, compared to the low maintenance lawn or the, or the wooded areas in this particular landscape. 
So kind of summarizing kind of those factors, at least uh, fa site factors, we saw that as we went and got higher runoff conditions, we got into finer texture soils, a lot lower infiltration rates, slash more runoff. These soils were wetter all the time and shallow water table, and those related to, to greater runoff conditions. Now, the, the, the next one that I want to talk about briefly is just grass type. Is there any difference between grasses in the potential for, for runoff and, 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 in this case, phosphorus in that runoff? And we had one study that looked at this, uh, Doug Lindy and, and Tom Wachke at Penn State, looked at, at the difference between perennial ryegrass and creeping bent grass under fairway turf and how that changed the hydrology and, and water quality. And they reported that creeping bent, that, uh, creeping bent grass uh, having a very dense canopy and compared to perennial ryegrass saw about half the volume of, of, of runoff compared to the, the perennial ryegrass. But for some reason, creeping bent grass is more leaky in terms of phosphorus and saw twice the amount of phosphorus in that runoff. Typically, when we see less volume of water, we see less transport of, of any nutrient. This is kind of one of the exceptions. And it, and, uh, it, it is interesting to, to note that for some reason, creeping bent grass in this particular study uh, was showing a pretty significant loss in comparison to perennial ryegrass, even though it had half the volume of, of water running off that site. Um, and, and as we have seen, not just in this study, but, but in, 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 in several other studies, that, that the, the runoff reduction we see related to turf quite often is related to density. And we had a, um, okay, ah, there's that slide. Um, we had a study done uh, during an establishment phase with, uh, with a Kentucky bluegrass, uh, perennial ryegrass lawn area, where we were measuring, we could measure and didn't measure shoot density. Uh, so as we doubled the shoots from five to 10 uh, shoots per centimeter, uh, we could see we could increase the infiltration rate, pretty much double the infiltration rate. Um, going from about, uh, what, about 12 millimeters an hour, or so a half an inch going up to almost an inch per hour. But in the same time, you could see the volume uh, of runoff uh, dramatically dropped in a linear fashion. So this helps explain where we see differences in density. It affects infiltration rates, which then also will affect the runoff uh, potential in those areas. So we really believe if you can keep, if you're going to have turf as a, as a landscape feature, if you can maintain density, uh, you're going you're to be able to, to increase that infiltration rate and, and reduce runoff potentials uh, pretty dramatically. And so we could see by doubling the, the, uh, the turf density, and we can't keep doubling it forever, but at least in this case, as we doubled the turf density, we, uh, we also doubled the infiltration rate and cut the runoff uh, uh, amount by, uh, by, by two-thirds, basically cutting it down to a third. OK. Um, if we wanted to kind of summarize uh, what, I think what we've learned in, in, in the phosphorus work that both Brian has done, uh, Wayne Cousseau has done a lot of work in, 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 um, in, uh, in Wisconsin, uh, there were a number of things I think that we've learned from this. And so this is kind of for the management take home messages from this. If we, can, if we can't produce you know, a dense turf, we can reduce volume runoff at, at less under conditions that are, uh, uh, where we have a lot of phosphorus being applied, we may not necessarily see any uh, greater loss in, in, in phosphorus runoff. And so either keeping weeds out, uh, especially annual weeds may be important, uh, reducing insect and disease damage uh, to maintain uh, density, um, being concerned about traffic that happens to be in areas that are used for recreational areas, but anything that will affect density is going to affect that potential for, uh, for runoff and, and potential for, for surface water quality. Um, Certainly, uh, not treating per in, uh, pervious areas, uh, impervious areas are important, and uh, we've seen the various versions of this slide. We'll give credit to EPA, because that was one of EPA's versions. I don't know whether you originally had the, the image for that, but that's shown up on one of your, uh, uh, in one of your, in one of your, it's probably showed up everywhere, so I'd always like to know where the original part is, because I don't see any disclaimer way at the bottom, kind of whose, uh, whose image this was. But yeah, it doesn't do very good to actually fertilize the water, at least I, I don't think it does. Um, 
We know that, that good fertilization programs often can reduce phosphorus runoff, especially with nitrogen. If we can manage it properly to increase density, to reduce the volume of runoff, that we don't necessarily see an increase in phosphorus runoff. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's usually a decrease unless we have very uh, high runoff potential sites. Uh, a, a good fertilization program uh, probably will, will not have a, a major environmental impact. Um, 